Hey everyone, my name is Perry and I'm an electrical engineer. Today I'm going to be watching Ant-Man to see how scientifically accurate the engineering scenes are. When I took over this company for Dr. Pym, I immediately started researching a particle that could change the distance between atoms while increasing density and strength. Starting off with the first part of that, changing the distance between atoms. At the center of each atom is a cluster of protons and neutrons. Depending on the size of the atom, the number of protons and number of neutrons will be different. However, what they all have in common is that they're all surrounded by electrons and, and that number also changes depending on the atom or molecule in question. What the PIM particle is doing is that it's shrinking the distance between the electrons and this nucleus as well as the distance between two atoms or two molecules making something smaller in volume. Currently with our knowledge of physics this is not even close to possible. When you're shrinking these atoms they're already naturally repelled by these electron forces. That's why when you take a magnet with two south pole ends, they will never touch each other. They will always repel. When you're taking these and you're shrinking them, you're bringing them closer together, which is going to require a very high amount of energy, not only to bring them closer, but to maintain them there. The second part of that is that it increases density. Density is mass over volume. So what's happening here is that if your mass is staying the same, but you're getting smaller, your density is increasing. When the wearer of the Ant-Man suit is shrinking, which means he's getting smaller in volume, his mass is staying the same. That's why it's increasing his density. So he can be that small, except he'll still weigh 150 pounds or however much the wearer of the suit currently weighs. What are you doing? I put water in the locking mechanism and froze it with nitrogen. Ice expands, metal doesn't. What are you doing now? Waiting. Waiting. Nice. What he was just doing is putting water inside that little hole that he drilled and then dumping the liquid nitrogen in there is going to really cool that water very fast. And what he's saying is like it's producing ice, which is pushing on the walls of the safe. And that, that part is actually true. The ice, when water freezes, it expands. So while it's expanding, it's pushing on those walls of the safe and eventually it'll just break it open. Unfortunately for Scott Lang, this is not scientifically accurate. When you mix uh, just water at room temperature and liquid nitrogen, which are very, very different in temperatures, by the way, you will not form enough ice to actually separate a metal safe. What he should have done is increase that temperature difference even more and put boiled water inside a little hole and then put liquid nitrogen in there because that would cause an explosion and that might be enough to break the locking mechanism which then lets him complete the burglary. You know, I think this regulator is holding Do me back. Do not screw with the regulator. If that regulator is compromised, you would go subatomic. What does that mean? It means that you would enter a quantum realm. What does that mean? It means that you would enter a reality where all concepts of time and space become irrelevant as you shrink for all eternity. I feel like you can use that technology to go back in time and get all the infinity stones before Thanos comes over and just wrecks your whole team and then you can bring everyone back and then kill him. But that's just me. Paratrachina longicornis, commonly known as crazy ants. They're lightning fast and can conduct electricity which makes them useful to fry out enemy electronics. Well, you're not so crazy. Hey! <laughs> you're cute. <laughs> I'm not sure how these ants can conduct electricity. I mean, it might just be that their exoskeleton is built that way, but he's sending these on a suicide mission if he wants them to interfere with any sort of electrical circuit that's being generated for really any purpose inside of a lab. Electricity is always going to pass through the path of least resistance, which will be the metal wires and not these ants. But if it were to pass through these guys, there is no way that they're going to survive that. They might be more useful in just biting through the wires and causing short circuits than actually using their conductivity to upset an electrical circuit. Caponotus pensylvanicus. Alternatively known as a carpenter ant, ideal for ground and air transport. Wait a minute, I know this guy. I'm gonna call him Anthony. This has always made me question how the pin particles work because we, we know for sure that his density is increasing when he's shrinking. 
So how is he able to sit on the back of this ant without just crushing it immediately? Because his his mass is still like 150 pounds, or I mean, what whatever he weighs, I mean, his mass did not change when he shrunk. That's why his density increased, as they said earlier in the movie. So he should not be able to fly on the back of any ant. Good. Communication is more than just verbal. Even when it comes to humans, I mean, the, if someone's making eye contact or however they're gesturing towards you with their body could tell you more about their intentions than just the words coming out of their mouth. Communication between ants, I, I'm not a biologist, but I don't think it's as verbal as it is with humans and mammals. We can train other animals to do whatever we want them to using our hand gestures, but there's no way that he's training all these ants to perform the acts that he wants them to. So I'm guessing that the earpiece that he's putting on the back of his ear is emitting some sort of sound that these ants are able to pick up and then execute these commands that Scott is thinking of. Why are these ants listening to him? Right? Like, just, like, let's just say that, like, putting that earpiece, like, it's one thing to actually hear somebody talking, it's another to actually do what they tell you to do. So even if these ants can actually listen and understand to the commands that Scott is giving them, why are they actually doing what he wants the ants to do? Like, unless the ants somehow think whoever's wearing that earpiece is, like, their queen, because they're very, very, very colonial creatures, so if some of them have to die for the survival of the entire colony, they will do that without question. But then, how, how did Hank determine, it's like, that earpiece indicates that, like, I'm the queen ant, and so, like, whatever he tells them to, they have to do, and they're not gonna question it. I wish I knew how that worked. I mean, if it, does it only work on ants? Like, can he use that with other insects around him? Or, like, why is it only that particular, and, like, why only those four species of ants that he showed in the movie? This, this thing just has more questions than it brings up. But I do not know of any communication between humans and animals that we will use like this sort of sound for that can control them. So I'm really curious as to how that thing works because I have no clue. Let's retrieve this prototype of signal decoy. It's a device that I invented during my shield days. That is how real engineering component prints look. They usually have a lot more in the description of the bottom right hand corner than just signal decoy. I don't know why they're calling it that anyway. It has a supplier name which is Stark Industries but it doesn't have the engineers who approved this part. It doesn't have a model year that I can see and it doesn't have any dates. <laughs> it does have a part number on it actually which is in the most bottom right hand corner. But the reason that you need a model year for all these parts that you're making is because you need to know when's the last time that this was updated. If you're looking at something that was from model year like 1990 for example, there's probably a better and more updated version of the component you're looking at. And it also helps you track all the changes that were done, so if you ever want to make a similar change, you can go back just to see how it worked in the past. And looking all around this, there are different angles and different views of the same component, and they each have their own dimensions, which is very good because you need to know where you can put this piece of equipment or component, and if it can actually fit in the final design of where you want it to go. I don't see any units on here, but that's probably because we're not actually zoomed in enough. On any engineering print in general, you will only have SI units, which are uh, meters or kilograms and variations of those. You won't have uh, pounds or inches, because only Americans use those. Located the breach, bringing them in. Sorry about this. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Breach is an adult male who has some sort of shrinking tech. Why does he have those wings? I mean, they look like they're solid metal, so I can't imagine they're actually helping him fly. If anything, they're gonna weigh him down. The point of a real falcon's wings is so that they can get ready to achieve lift and get off the ground. But he's not actually flapping those wings. I mean, they're really just there to help him glide. Which, how, how is he gliding, going against gravity, going up? Like, what is he actually using for fuel to create that thrust to get him up off the ground? As a character in the movies, I think Falcon is really cool, and I think his role is actually vital so that he can help out Captain America, but... Why did he get the shield? Oh 
that is very cool. Fire ants actually have a hydrophobic layer around them, which means they're repelling water. So when they actually group together like that, they can actually form a raft. And they, they do this in nature all the time. Not only that, but we know that Scott still weighs, a, like however much he weighs, I've, I've been saying 150 pounds just for the sake of the video, but he still has his same body weight while he's on the back of these ants. However, he's not going to actually kill them because, like I said, they're hydrophobic. They're not actually weighing themselves on the water. Like, you cannot drown these fire ants just by putting pressure on them while they're on the surface of water. You insult me, Scott. Your very existence is insulting to me. You know, it'd be much easier to hit you if you were bigger. I don't know why he's using lasers for weapons. I mean, he can achieve the same, if not more, with just a miniaturized gun. I mean, we, there are lasers today that we can use to just create enough heat that blows a hole right through someone's head and kills them, but they require a lot of power to operate, and they're huge. I mean, they're really, really heavy. So even if he miniaturized them, their mass would still be the same, and he would still need a power source to power those lasers to actually use them the way that he is. That doesn't make any sense. We know when you use the pin particles, your density increases when you get smaller because your mass is staying the same, but your volume is decreasing. And that makes sense as to why your density goes up because of that. But if your volume is increasing and your mass is staying the same, your density goes down. But what we clearly see is that train just did a number on the house and it crushed a car. So the mass of this object is really increased, which does not make sense as to what they said in the beginning of the movie. That, this should not happen. of each of these credits it actually says magnification times and this one is uh 3.8 and it says e plus 0 0.8 that's actually a scientific notation what that means is it's 3.8 times 10 to the eighth power so that is really really magnified like we're really zooming in here but it's really cool how as the credits go by the magnification increases that was just a fun touch that the producers did or the director we're working with that idea um Nice. Overall, I thought this movie was really good. I had a very fun time watching it and even more fun time analyzing it. Unfortunately, many of the engineering scenes in this movie were not as accurate as they were in Iron Man or other Marvel movies that I've watched. I mean, granted, they did invent a pimp particle, which was the base of this whole film, and they used the laws of those physics that they created for the rest of the movie. But what bothers me is even though they created their own pimp particle, they didn't follow the own rules like that they created. Like they say at the very beginning of the movie how it works is that when you shrink, right, your volume is decreasing and they clearly say your density increases. So what we know for sure is that the mass of whoever's wearing the Ant-Man suit or the yellow jacket, their mass is staying the same while their volume is decreasing, which means their density goes up. Like that's how that works. But when that train expanded and it just blew part of that house open and then fell on the cop car, that shouldn't happen. Or when Ant-Man was flying on the back of an ant, that's a 150 pound man on the back of an ant. Like that ant would die very quickly. He shouldn't be able to fly on the back of it. They got the engineering component print right and they had this magnification at the Curtis, which is really cool. A lot of very cool aspects of this movie. And the ants, they showed those four different species of ants and their sizes were different from each other, their functions were different, and how they helped Ant-Man in the whole heist was very cool to watch. This movie is extremely similar to Iron Man. Somebody who has a unique technology that only they have, and then within their own company, which their technology was built, somebody else who is who wants to take over the new company, which is Darren Cross, is the equivalent of uh, Obadiah and Iron Man and now he gets the same technology and uses it for evil purposes and now they're fighting each other out 
and at the end of the movie, the lab which they built from the, from that technology blows up, and it's just we're, I'm seeing a very clean pattern here between these Marvel movies. If I missed anything, let me know. I'm still a huge fan of the Marvel universe. I want them to keep making more of these. I had the best time watching Ant-Man and I can watch it again and still have fun. Put in the comments what movie or TV show you want me to watch next. Thank you guys for watching this. Stay fresh. Stay golden.